Zero Fossil Fuel back here. I just wanted to uh, make a quick video to show you the progress of the Bob and Raceway assembly. Uh, I'm going to try to keep this one very short because I want this particular video to grow in length as the progress continues, but I wanted to show you some of the problems that I've been running into with regards to uh, building this thing. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but these the, the it's a two 14 gauge copper rails that were laid out straight on my bench when I started. I cut a number of identical pieces of 14 gauge copper. Again, I wish I could move this camera in place, but you get a good idea of that. And bent them uh, approximately 3 sixteenths of an inch from the end with a pair of needle nose and soldered them to the rails so that Show you this. Yeah, that's a pretty good, pretty good angle. You get an idea of how these, this will stand off from the bobbin. And there we go. Yeah, good shot of that. That's how that's how it's going to sit against the bobbin. And from the end view, or from the side view, I should say, it's going to look like this. The bearing fits quite nicely in between the rails with only about one millimeter play up and down so as this thing traverses around uh, it will ride in between up and down where I have the bends made what is becoming painfully apparent is that it's going to be very very difficult to get the timing on this bobbin by bending the straight ra the rails that are straight now to create the slopes up and down around the perimeter of the bobbin and do that two times up once actually up once and then 90 degrees it will be down another 90 degrees it goes up and at 270 degrees it goes down and at 360 it starts over again this is going to be a real trick um, I'm going to spend some time tonight trying to uh, trying to get this thing to do to perform the mechanical mechanical magic that I needed to do, but uh, I, I don't know. I'm, I don't have a whole lot of uh, confidence in that. A viewer suggested an idea, and I drew a quick sketch right here. I think is probably a more viable approach, and if I if my uh, attempt at the raceway using the copper rails crashes and burns as I suspect it will, then I will probably pursue something more like this. Uh, we've got two electromagnets, top and bottom, with a magnet sitting at the end of the at the back end of the lever for the stator mechanism. Top is north, bottom is south. Just as an example, purely arbitrary, with no electrical current applied to either coil, you will have the magnet either sticking to the top nail or the bottom nail, whichever is closest is where it will where it will attract and where it will tend to come to rest. All I need to do, I sh all I should need to do is to send an electrical impulse at the right time to the appropriate coil uh, with a similar <laughs> bugs, with a similar facing pole to push the magnet away from the pole that it happens to be resting at and toward the other pole where it will come to rest and hold itself in place until the next pulse on the opposite side sends it to the opposite side again. Uh, probably just need a couple of hall sensors, uh, MOSFET transistors, I'm sure I've got something laying around. Hall effect devices though I'm not so sure about. I'll probably have to order those. That might be a few days. Uh, so I will play around with the bearing raceway for a while. We'll see how that works out and um, I'll uh, report my results in a short while. Actually, maybe a long while. We'll see. Stay tuned. Okay, zero fossil fuel back. Uh, this is my last entry for the evening. It is uh, approximately 4 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time and I want to show you even I am pleasantly surprised with how well this came out. Uh, I'll try to get this.
this in here to show you. There we go. You can see that I've successfully created and mounted the 14 gauge copper wire raceway that the bearing will travel up and down on. I have a displacement of about four or five millimeters. I may need to go a little bit more, which simply means that I need to uh, unmount it from the bobbin assembly, which is again a friction fit to the bottom of the rotor, and it is secured to the bottom part of the bobbin assembly. Maybe I can show you real quickly here. With hot glue, of course. It's pretty tight. There we go. And I guess you can see how I have that glued down. And you get an idea of the overall height. Let me measure that. Let's see what we have for height. Yeah, a little more than that. No, not a little more than I thought. Three sixteenths of an inch. That is about four millimeters. That may not be enough. When I increase the angle or increase the length of the incline what happens is the overall diameter of the of the ring of the raceway decreases um, which is not a big deal because I still have plenty of room inside the bobbin to accommodate for that and I can easily adjust the length of the arm that controls the stator to reach further in as the raceway becomes smaller and smaller but it's going together very nicely uh, tomorrow evening I will be putting together the roller bearing at the end of the arm. There we go. See, I still can't hold this on camera. I'll be putting together the roller bearing on the end of the arm for the uh, stator and hopefully giving this thing a test run tomorrow, if not the day after. But. You can see that it's pretty well centered. It doesn't wobble very much, and the small amount of wobble that it does have uh, is easily taken up by the thickness of the bearing that'll be rolling on inside of the track. So, pretty excited. Uh, hope things work out tomorrow, and uh, hope we will be making history. Zero Fossil Fuel signing out for now. Stay tuned for more. Thank you.